My name is Akinori Takeuchi. I work at the National Institute for Environmental Studies in Japan. Uh, we have started banking activities uh, in 1980. We archive uh, five different samples, mussels, fishes, benthic sediments, Armsuki particulates, and human breast milk. And uh, we have determined the increase in the perfumery compounds in coastline environment in Japan. The main purpose is to, of course, the retrospective analysis and um, the pollutants unidentified and we can detect in the future, but at the same time we can monitor the uh, chemical pollutants all over the world, so hopefully we can establish the specimen banking activities in, in, the, in the world and we can cooperate it to detect the uh, number of chemicals and toxic elements in the future. My name is Anders Bignet and I work at the Department for Contaminant Research at the Swedish Museum of Natural History in Stockholm, Sweden. Our uh, favorite uh, matrix is uh, guillemot eggs um, and we do retrospective analysis on these eggs for many different contaminants but um, recently we have analyzed uh, perfluorinated substances and they show a, a clear increase so they have um, uh, quite uh, extremely elevated levels. I wish that uh, we are, are developing the protocol for sampling and that we uh, think in uh, quantitative ways, that we uh, formulate quantitative objectives with our studies so that we collect the sampling uh, samples in an appropriate way. I am Suramanian. Now I belong to the Environmental Specimen Bank of uh, Ehime University, Japan. By using these uh, human milk samples that we collected from all over the world, especially from the Asian countries, we established three things. Human milk samples are one of the best samples for determining the spatial and temporal trends of chemicals. The second one is that we, unlike in the previous belief, that the developed nations are the sources for these chemicals, that is the classical and novel POPs chemicals. We found that even the developing countries, the Asian developing countries are also the sources for these chemicals. And thirdly, we found that the, in the Asian developing countries, the levels of the classical organochlorine chemicals such as DDTs, PCBs are decreasing and at the same time the novel POPs chemicals like the uh, brominator flame retardants are increasing. The pilot specimen banks should also be established in the biodiversity rich developing countries. My name is Birgit Braun. I'm a research scientist with Environment Canada and I've been involved in specimen banking for over 20 years. We've been monitoring these chemical compounds in Arctic seabird eggs and as you can see from this graph, the concentrations of these PBDEs have increased from 1975 to 2003 after which they dropped off very dramatically. Now in 2005 the United States stopped produ uh, production of some of the heavily used commercial BDE products and the following year Canada stopped using them as well and you can see how well these seabird eggs reflect the North American usage pattern. And I would encourage countries to archive their specimens in as standardized a manner as possible in order to facilitate the comparison of temporal trends and spatial patterns on a global basis. My name is Bruno Cozzi from the University of Padova. I represent the Mediterranean Marine Mammal Tissue Bank which is active since 2002. This is a sample of a trachea of a bottlenose dolphin. This animal has been living in the Mediterranean Sea. We store the sample of the dolphin and whales of the area and we keep them frozen or paraffin embedded like this. We use them to search for chemicals and pollutants or to understand why the animal died. The Mediterranean Marine Mammal Tissue Bank has the hope to store as many tissues from marine mammals as possible to constitute a deposit of what these animals have been, their lifestyle, the way they've been behaving in the sea, and what they will represent for future generations that will study their tissues. I'm Daryl McGoldrick and I uh, work for Environment Canada and we've been running a specimen bank of fish from lakes in Canada for 33 years. We um, monitor contaminants in whole fish tissues which we preserve in our archive and uh, recently 
there was interest in brominated flame retardants by the Canadian government, and we were able to generate a 30-year time trend using our archive specimens and showed that since the mid to late two, 1990s to early 2000s, the um, con concentrations of those compounds have been declining by about 5% a year in the Canadian environment. And in the future, I hope that um, the specimen banking will uh, continue in more countries and uh, we can work together. My name is Eero Kubin and I'm coming from Finnish Forest Research Institute. In Finland, Specimen Bank Paljakka was built in 1994, but there are stored samples now since 1950s. I have certificate reference material from Environmental Specimen Bank Paljakka. By using these reference samples, it is possible to compare results to get reliable information to European-wide surveys, which have been done five years intervals since 1990. European Union could give a directive to establish Environmental Specimen Bank to each member country. I also highly recommend more collaboration between existing specimen banks. My name is Geert Asmund and I work at the National Environmental Research Institute in Roskilde, Denmark. I work with environmental studies in Greenland and at our workplace we have a sample bank of all the samples we have collected in Greenland. I have brought two samples here, two very interesting samples of polar bear hair. This one is hair from a polar bear that was shot by Inuits last year. We have taken a sample of the hair and analyzed it for mercury. This sample is also polar bear hair, but this is an archaeological sample that was found by archaeologists. It has been shown to be 700 years old. It has been cleaned and also analyzed for mercury in our laboratory. The new sample have 10 ppm mercury, the old sample has 0.5. So the new sample have 20 times more mercury than the sample that is 700 years old. We have two hopes. One is that the samples that we now store will be used in the future for solving problems that we have not anticipated today. We also hope that the samples that are collected far away from industrial areas as Greenland and the Arctic is uh, situated far away from industrial areas, that these samples can be used to compare with samples collected here in Germany, for instance. Are there differences between chemicals in Germany and in the Arctic? Are there chemicals that are produced and released here that can find their way thousands of kilometers up to the Arctic and found in the animals there? My name is Jochen Flassbart. I'm president of the Environment Protection Agency in Germany. We have experiences with our environment specimen bank since 1980s, so this covers three decades. What I brought um, to this conference are two samples of freeze-dried bream fillets, grinded ones, um, and you can read from these two samples from which part of Germany they are coming. Whereas in East Germany, the former GDR, DDT was used much longer than in West Germany. In West Germany, you had a higher use of PCBs. PCBs were, uh, well, let's say, typical West German uh, chemical. My hope is that we uh, will achieve to establish a more integrated cooperation in environmental specimen banking and I want to encourage all colleagues to enhance their cooperation, their international cooperation, because I'm uh, convinced that with this cooperation we can provide a powerful tool to politics. I'm Jochen Müller from the University of Queensland. Uh, which hosts the Australian Environmental Specimen Bank. I brought along a passive sampler, which is a, a tool for measuring chemicals in water, dissolved in water. We use this like an artificial muscle along the Great Barrier Reef and in other water bodies to measure, for example, herbicides such as atrazine and diuron. We can clearly measure 
big summer peaks, and this is due, most likely due to runoff from agricultural areas where these chemicals are used, for example, from sugarcane areas. Environmental specimen banks are one of many tools uh, and a very cost-effective tool for really assessing whether polit political regulation transfers in improvement of the environment. Hi, my name is Joel Knori. I worked at IFREMER, Centre de Nantes, which is located where the Loire uh, meets the sea. This institute has been collecting and storing environmental samples since 1981. I chose to bring to Berlin a sample of uh, mussels ground dried up and freeze dried. We saw the rise and fall of uh, PCB contamination along the uh, French coastline and also the rise and fall of uh, metal contaminations such as silver. Yes, we do find silver in the sea and uh, it uh, actually, the levels are coming down uh, due to the advent of, uh, in part, digital photography. We also need to uh, get samples out of the bank and get scientists to use those samples. Hi, I'm John Kuklik and I'm with uh, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. I'll give an interesting example of a project that we have, and this is looking at beluga whales. Uh, beluga whale is the white whale that lives in the Arctic. We have been monitoring trends of consumer products. One consumer product is a brominated flame retardant uh, in these uh, whales and we found that the concentrations are increasing in the blubber of the beluga whale. And this is significant because beluga whales are consumed by people for subsistence and it also may have some effect on beluga whale health. One of the things I've learned about specimen banks is you can't anticipate what you will be measuring in the future. Uh, ten years ago, I would have had no idea I would have been measuring brominated flame retardants in beluga whales. But now we have the technology and the interest in these chemicals and, and this has become very relevant today. My name is Jon Fuglestad. I work for the Climate and Pollution Agency in uh, Norway. Officially, the Ministry of the Environment announced the Norwegian ESB to be established now in October 2010. Well, I have brought a Vendes from Lake Mjøsa in uh, Norway. And in uh, 2003, we discovered that Lake Mjøsa had very high concentrations of uh, uh, PBDEs, the brominated flame retardants. Our retrospective analysis then gave us this time trends and we can, uh, based on this time trend, we could say when the discharges of PBDEs to the lake started, we could see what was the background concentrations in the lake and we can then also tell when the, the concentrations now in the future will be on a background level again. So th this uh, fish and the, from Lake Mjøsa helped us very much in our management for the PBDEs in Lake Mjøsa. We also would very much like to see integrated specimen banks for biomonitoring and environmental samples. I think that's very important to include human biomonitoring in this work. I'm Elizabeth Chadwick and I manage the Cardiff University Otter Project in collaboration with the UK Environment Agency and it's been collecting otter samples since 1994. The sample I've brought with me today is um, muscle tissue collected from the otters. Um, we take muscle tissue uh, along with many other samples um, to try and help explain some of the variability between individuals. I think by collaborating more widely um, on a global basis um, we can do better science which means we can help protect the environment in a better way. My name is uh, Manu Soto and coming from the Biscay Bay Environmental Specimen Bank. We started working in, in this kind of issues one year ago, a little bit more, and we are developing a pilot study that will become more stronger, more important in four or five years' time. There uh, will be eels, there will be mussels, there will be any kind of mollusk, and also earthworms, uh, and also slacks, uh, snails, or whatever it is. In the next future, we would like to develop a specimen bank not only devoted for chemical analysis, but also to uh, environmental analysis based on uh, biological samples in order to uh, relate 
contamination levels and also biological effects and trying to see the possibility, possibility of uh, recovering the, the normal status of the animals uh, according to analysis, analysis at molecular, cellular and tissue levels. My name is Marco Grotti from uh, Genoa University and uh, I represent uh, here the uh, Antarctica Environmental Specimen Bank uh, uh, which is operating since uh, 1994. Here is a specimen of uh, Adamusum colbeki which is uh, a mussel living uh, in the Antarctic uh, coastal waters. In particular uh, we are uh, monitoring heavy metals such as mercury and uh, cadmium which are very toxic to uh, animals and uh, humans. And so far, fortunately, uh, the concentration uh, of these pollutants and their temporal trend uh, indicate uh, a natural, uncontaminated uh, situation. I hope that uh, in the future, uh, networking of the environmental specimen banks uh, uh, present uh, all around the world and uh, harmonization of procedures uh, could lead to uh, monitoring uh, on a global planetary scale. My name is Monika Jürgens. I'm from the Center for Ecology and Hydrology in the UK and um, we're doing the UK Fish Tissue Archive since 2007. The specimen we're sampling is mostly roach, which is a small fish that we collect from rivers. We got fish about this sort of size usually, which are like three or four years old. But we've got some interesting data, for example, that some of the fish we've analyzed have got mercury values above the environmental quality standards. In the future we will probably have better methods to analyze trace contamination in our samples and that way they can, people can go back to our samples from today and look at the concentrations of various chemicals which we would not be able to measure now or which we would not think of measuring now because we don't know that this chemical might be a problem. Uh, my name is Kim Myung Jin. I, I work for National Institute of Environment Research in Korea. Uh, 2010, we started just a pilot study of, of some specimens. We uh, prepared 14 environment specimens in uh, terrestrial ecology, riverine ecolo ecosystem, and uh, uh, marine ecosystem. Environment specimen banking is uh, necessary to all the world. Professor Manuswami, Department of Zoology, University of Madras. I've been working on this specimen bank and likely to be established in the years to come. And we've got many specimens, marine specimens, especially marine mammals, and we want to establish in short time. We are at the infant stage of establishing specimen bank. Our previous report say that marine mammals are getting depleted due to chemical pollution in the sea. So there is a need for establishing a nominal specimen bank in India. It is a valuable resources of establishing temporal trends for compound in marine ecosystem and conservation of marine animals. My name is uh, Paul Becker. I'm with the Marine Environmental Specimen Bank in the U.S. Uh, the U.S. has been uh, uh, environmental specimen banking since 1979. Uh, the sample that I have is a specimen from, it's a liver specimen from a uh, beluga whale uh, from Alaska. Uh, these particular specimens are uh, analyzed for uh, some of the emerging contaminants, one of those being perfluorinated compounds, to determine whether there are increases in this particular uh, contaminant within this whale, which is an important resource in Alaska. Well, although there are specimen banks in many different countries, there's still a need to expand banking because there are many regions in which uh, environmental specimen banking does not include. Therefore, in order for this to be a, a real worldwide uh, important resource for uh, environmental monitoring and research, uh, this ex expansion needs to take place. My name is Shinsuke Tanabe from the Center for Marine Environmental Studies at Ehime University, Japan. Our youth bank has an archived large number of the biological and the environmental samples collected from the various parts of the world, 
uh, over a period of the 40 uh, years. Recently, we uh, analyzed an uh, uh, emerging pop, such as an uh, polybrominated typing of Isis and uh, hexabrom cyclotodicans in the uh, marine mammals. Interestingly, we found the uh, drastic increase of the uh, HBCD pollutions in uh, marine mammals. Uh, this is probably due to the, uh, uh, what's the emissions of these uh, contaminants uh, from the uh, various uh, countries, particularly in the uh, Asia Pacific regions. So, the, uh, in future, the uh, Environmental Specimen Bank should be constructed in the uh, developing countries. This is my opinion. Uh, my name is Yan Ling Qiu. Uh, I'm from uh, the State Key Laboratory of Pollution Control and Resource Reuse of Tongji University. The specimen I brought here, uh, it is a sediment specimen from the Taihu Lake of China because we found uh, a high concentration of hexachlorobenzene in the sed sediment sample. And uh, the high concentration in the sediment uh, suggests that we may have uh, some chemical pollutants around the lake. Along with the uh, rapid economy development in China, um, our environmental quality is also changing rapidly. So we have an urgent need to establish an environmental specimen bank. To do this better, we need to have uh, more international collaboration. My name is Yue Hui Kang from China, the Research Center for eco environmental Science, Chinese Academy of Sciences, Beijing. Uh, the ESBO Center is established in 2006. We use sediment uh, simple to analyze the dioxin concentration level in the, from Tongting Lake, south of China. The result is, is shown here. You can see the concentration level is decreased from 1995 to 2004 because the main contamination source is prohibit used in this area from 1995. I would like to see more integrative approach in human and environmental health monitoring. There are nearly 20 environmental space banks all over the world. Let's cooperate.